Hey everybody, it's Mike from GetFitOver40.com with a kind of review video. I'm not going to be reviewing this TickWatch Pro GPS in the normal sense and go over all the how it works and showing you all around the screen and the software, and the Mobi app and the Google Fit app and all the apps that come with it. Essentially, I'm going to talk about how I personally use this watch. I'll go over some basic stuff, but if you want to know more information about all the apps and features and all of those things. There's so many videos on this watch out on YouTube. You can watch those videos. There's lots of really great ones with a ton of information. And overall, you're gonna find out this watch is pretty cool. Now I did make a previous video talking about why I was interested in this watch and why I was considering ditching my Garmin Phoenix 5X. And part of the reason is I really do like smartwatches. I like the smartwatch capabilities, the ability to answer your phone on your watch, speak into your watch and have it text people and all of those apps that you can download and all the numerous watch faces and customization you can do with a smartwatch and the integration that you have with apps on your phone. All of that stuff is really cool. Now the Garmin does do a little bit of that, but I wouldn't call the Garmin watches in general smart watches. Some of them are gearing up and getting more focused on that, but the general Garmin watch series is more of a fitness outdoorsy type watch and it does a great job of doing that. No doubt about it. And that's what I liked about the Garmin is it was a fitness watch. It worked really well as a fitness watch. So moving forward with the TicWatch Pro GPS, that was a big concern. Is it going to be a decent fitness watch? Can I make the smartwatch into a fitness watch work similarly as the Garmin or at least as well or as well for me what I needed it to do for my typical fitness needs? And at the end of the day, I've kind of figured out a workaround. Now, I'm a stubborn guy. It took a long time. I had to play with numerous apps. I had to literally use almost every app on this watch. So the Mobi app, Google Fit. I used Fitbit. I've been using Adidas running app. I've been using, of course, MyFitnessPal, an app called HealthSync. So you can see a lot of them up top here. I tried Sporty Go. I've tried a whole bunch of things to get this to work the way I needed it to work. And so what are my basic needs in a fitness watch? Well, I like to be able to hook up a heart rate monitor when I want really precise heart rate recording. I also want the built-in heart rate monitor to be decent and to work fairly well when I'm not using a heart rate monitor or an external heart rate monitor, like a chest strap. So that built-in optical heart rate monitor, it's always a good thing if it works well. We'll get into that more. And I want to be able to use an app that tracks my fitness fairly accurately. It doesn't give me too many calorie credits or too little. I want to be able to count my steps and have that be automatically put into MyFitnessPal. I want my activities to automatically sync into MyFitnessPal. So there has to be some sort of integration with whatever app that I'm using to be able to have it automatically paired with MyFitnessPal. So I don't have to manually enter that data into MyFitnessPal every time I do some sort of an activity. All right, so this is going to be daunting. It's probably going to be confusing. It confuses me. I have to try and work my mind around all the different ways that I got this working. So we're gonna go through the apps. I'm gonna tell you some of the things that worked and didn't work. And then I'm gonna ultimately kind of talk about what is working for me at this point. So talking about the Movi app here, it's the built-in Movi tick watch app. And I really don't use it for anything other than periodic sleep monitoring. I can use the sleep monitoring feature here and look at my sleep. Now, this is just a half a night of sleeping because I was charging my watch part of the night, but it did capture the half of the night that I was wearing the watch. And it's fine. It works fine. I'm not that, you know, it doesn't really matter. You'll see there's not much because I don't generally sleep with the watch on. I'm usually charging it at night. I just charge it up every night. I don't need to necessarily. This watch can get up to three days, but for what the way I use it with the amount of activity that I do with the all the time on display that I have going on here, I find I get like a day and a half. And it's fine, that's all I need. And I'm really using the watch a lot, so that's okay with me. So I'm not really using this, and the reason I'm not using this app is because I cannot connect a heart rate monitor to it, and it doesn't really sync very well with other apps. It will sync to Google Fit, but the problem with Google Fit is it's not syncing to MyFitnessPal. It's supposed to in theory, but for whatever reason, I don't know why, but the answer that I got when I did the big internet Google search is that some accounts it just doesn't work with. And this has been an ongoing thing for a long time. You would think Google could fix it or MyFitnessPal could fix it, but they just haven't. And so there's no dependable way to sync the data from Google Fit over to MyFitnessPal. I have to use a third-party app to get some of the Google Fit data over to where I need it. There we go, got a little notification. I need to use a third-party app in order to use Google Fit to get the data from Google Fit to some other apps that then get it to MyFitnessPal. So let's get out of here. 
Uh, we'll talk about Google Fit right now. So Google Fit, I'm using to track my steps because I can shuttle that information through another app, which I'll show you. And that information then gets sent to, <laughs> this is kind of confusing, to the Fitbit app, which then sends that information to my fitness pal. So I'll show you that in a bit. But the cool thing is, is Google Fit does kind of acquire a lot of, of a lot of the other app information. So I'm using the Adidas running app for tracking my walking and workouts and things like that. So you can see it's tracking its own little walks because it does monitor on its own. It sort of uses its own built-in GPS and things like that. So sort of, I guess, aggregate other things that I'm doing, even if I'm not recording them. But the ones with maps and things, those are generally actual walks that I've done. If there's a map there, I've actually recorded. And you can see you've got the little Adidas symbol there. Those are the actual Adidas recorded um, workouts or walks or whatever I was doing. So in this case, it's a workout. I can look at it. Now, Google doesn't do a very good job of showing you the heart rate. It's this really sweeping thing, which is almost useless. But it's kind of cool because if I did a walk, right, I should be able to see that on a graph there and all that. So it's kind of neat to see all your aggregated information in one place. But essentially, all I'm doing is using the steps from here so that I can get the steps from my watch into Google Fit, which then, <laughs> using HealthSync, you see here I've got steps going from Google Fit to MyFitnessPal. And then I have my weight going, so I'm recording weight from another app into Google Fit, which then sends it to Fitbit. So Google Fit to Fitbit, Google Fit to Fitbit, cancel that. And then that information from Fitbit goes to MyFitnessPal because the Fitbit app actually syncs to MyFitnessPal perfectly. So Google Fit doesn't sync to MyFitnessPal, Fitbit does. So Fitbit becomes this mediator. I'm not really using Fitbit other than a mediator to get my Google Fit data and my, so my steps and my weight from my scale. Now, Google Fit isn't actually tracking my weight. It's another app that syncs to Google Fit, which then syncs to Fitbit, which then syncs to MyFitnessPal. So you're probably following me at this point that this is super confusing what's happening here. Like you've got to be like almost, you know, some weird person with psychopathic person that's willing to go through all of these weird tests and trials to try to get this all working. All right. So now we're, we've shown you the Movi app, the Google Fit app. Um, this is the health app that I'm using. Okay. And this one records my weight and that one goes, it's synced to Google Fit. So I paired it or synced it to Google Fit. And, uh, that's how I get my weight automatically entered into Google Fit so that I don't have to manually enter it every time I weigh myself. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go over the apps and then I'll show you the phone a little bit. I will talk about a, an app called Sporty Go real quick. Maybe I'll show you here. I'm gonna probably have to put a password in here or something. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, it's gonna make me do that because I'm not wearing it. So there's an app called Sporty Go. Where are you? There you are. And I really wanted this app to work. It's pretty cool. You can do activities. Uh, you can hook it up to a heart rate monitor. But the problem is, is it's just crashing. And I don't know why. It's just crashing all the time. And so I'm losing workouts most of the time. Like if it was once in a blue moon, I could handle that. But it's most of the time. And the other problem I had with Sporty Go is it's giving me way too many calories than I should be getting. So I'm doing a workout and I'm getting probably 35 to 40% more calories than I should. Even with walks, I'm getting more calories than I should. So I thought a cool workaround would be to just set my weight as a lower weight. So hopefully I'll get lower, less calories. And I literally had to almost, well, pretty much had to half my body weight to get it to be able to do kind of close to what it should be doing in terms of calorie output, which I think is a bit of an oversight. How I was using Sporty Fit is I was syncing it to Strava. So after a workout, it would sync to Strava and then Strava would then sync it to MyFitnessPal. But if I'm losing workouts, then that's not an option, obviously. All right, so let's talk about Adidas Runner. Now, the cool thing is, is I have, I'm gonna have to touch this first. I have Adidas Runner set up as a fast load button, right? So well, that's not what I want. There we go, okay. So when I hit this button here, um, Adidas Runner, or I think Adidas, yeah, that's what it's called, Adidas Runner, will start up and I can, right now it's in walking mode, but I can change it from walking to strength training. I can also use a heart rate monitor. As you can see here, I can put a heart rate monitor on there. It's gonna look for one. I'm gonna go um, this device. So right now it's using the optical one, but if it sends the heart rate monitor, it's already paired to a heart rate monitor, it'll see that right away. And then I can go in and I can start my workout. It's a very simple app. There's not a lot you can do in terms of like changing the screens too much. 
I mean, essentially I can go and I can change, there's usually like three data fields and I can change them by holding them down and changing them to different things. And that's enough for me, generally speaking, all I need is three data fields, like maybe the total time, maybe my calories, maybe my heart rate, things like that, or distance. If I'm walking, I'll have that in there, things like that. Okay. Now it's kind of cool. I like this um, app. You can go to your activities here. Let's just go back to, and you can see we've got our activities here yesterday and I haven't done anything today. It's I haven't done any actual exercises, but you can see, you can record your workouts. You've got your, you know, different things, your heart rate, right? Splits and things like that. This is this thing. I don't know why this graph is mostly covered by this thing. Like this is like nice information, but why cover the, the data, especially if your heart rate's low, if you're just walking, you're not going to have that many spikes. So that's kind of stupid, but hopefully they'll fix that. But you do get a lot of information. Um, about what's going on and then with workouts it's a little bit less information you don't need speed and all that kind of stuff um, but you do have this guy it would be nice if they had a, a nice heart rate graph you could actually see right that would be good and by the way all of these workouts I've been just using the internal uh, heart rate monitor built into this watch because it's actually pretty good when I do a workout it's capturing a lot of my high heart rate moments when I do less movements and stuff, when I'm working out as hard, it seems to be on the ball pretty close. I have found that when I go for walks every once in a while, it'll show a really high heart rate. I don't know why, it'll kind of get confused. But I think with walking, it's measuring distance and time more than heart rate. So it doesn't really affect the overall calorie output. And it's pretty accurate in terms of distance versus, you know, for someone my size, when I walk about a mile, I should get around 125 calories per mile, maybe a bit more, maybe up to 150 if I'm really, you know, working hard, maybe I'm walking uphill. It doesn't really factor in heart rate as much, but that's okay. It's factoring distance and time, which I think is probably more important at the end of the day. Uh, with workouts, I think it's a little of the same could be said in that it's not utilizing my heart rate as much as I'd like it to, but it does give me a reasonable amount of calories per hour worked out. I usually get about 500 calories per hour, which for me is about right. And I know this because I've used a lot of heart rate monitors, a lot of different apps and things, and some will be really high, some will be really low. I find 500 to maybe 600 tops is about how much I can burn in an hour. 600 would be if I'm really working hard. 500 is generally right about where it's normally at for me. So in terms of this app, that's really all I wanna show you. There's not too much I wanna show you because I really only use it for tracking fitness, walking, things like that. If I go bike riding, right, you can see more. You can see all of your workouts and things. And go back to the history. That's all I use this app for. Now going to the Fitbit app, I wanna show you this real quick here. You can see here, we've got all of our exercises because we're on the exercise screen. This is like your home screen, your today screen. I haven't burned many calories. This is just tracking how many calories I've burnt so far. This is like BMR with any exercise. You can see we have steps, right? And now if I click on today, you'll notice that all my steps are in the AM right there. What'll happen because it's syncing with Google Fit is it's not actually tracking my steps throughout the day. If I want to see them there, I can show, I could go into Google Fit and see sort of like when I was taking all those steps. This is just tracking total steps, which is all I need because I just want the total steps to go into MyFitnessPal. And so it kind of like, what happens is it'll do a chunk of data, then a chunk of data, then a chunk of data. So I'll have all these tall bars right at the beginning and nothing over here because the HealthSync app is just syncing the steps. So that's why that looks like that. And if I want to look at my exercise again, I can look at um, my walking here and you can see it doesn't really give me much, but it does add it in and it does take this information. So my walking, 214 calories, uh, workout 572, that goes right into MyFitnessPal automatically for me, okay? So that works really well. I'm gonna show you in Google Fit here how the steps thing kind of looks. So here you can see my actual steps, literally not all at one bundle here for a total of the AM hours. This is actually what's going on in terms of steps. Right. I mean, they have heart rate and all that kind of stuff as well. If I want to look at it, I can I can check that out as well. But that's kind of how it works. Um, so here's heart rate. Right. So if I want to see my heart rate for the day, I can see it there. I should be able to see heart rate in this app as well. OK, so there's different ways of looking at your heart rate through the different apps. I don't generally do that too much. I'm going to look back to my heart rate all the time. Now, let's go into my fitness pal. Let's go to my diary. Let's go to, say, yesterday. So you can see here, I got my food tracking. I've got my total steps from Fitbit. 
I've got my walking workout. I've got my strength training workout. It's going to tell me my total calories. You'll notice that even though I did 15,000 steps in Fitbit, I didn't get a calorie credit. It's a little weird. I'm not sure I like that. It's a little conservative. If I look at it, you'll see here, the reason for that is because Fitbit essentially says I only burned 2892. So its total in Fitbit was lower than my fitness pals. Now, if it had a total higher than my fitness pal, it would then give me a calorie credit. Okay, so it's got a lower estimation of how many calories I burn. And part of the reason for that is because it's probably giving me a BMR less than MyFitnessPal is. So I have MyFitnessPal set up so that I'm seeing what my actual BMR really is. It's really close to that. It's usually around 2150 to 22 something. That's based on my muscle mass and my size. And that's pretty close within 50 to 100 calories. And then I like to add in any exercise. I would imagine that my fitness pal probably has set my BMR about 300 calories less than that. And that's why I'm getting the discrepancy when I go down here and I see about a 300 calorie at least difference or close to it. Well, this would be actually 100 or so. But when you factor in steps, I should have got some sort of calorie credit. So I'm going to say Fitbit should be giving me another 300 calories or so for the added BMR that I probably have. Hope that all makes sense. I'm gonna show you the watch really quickly. Okay, just some basic stuff here. It's gonna want me to do my little password that I just set up for now. So, okay, so I'm using this screen because it's big. And for someone like me, I like a big screen because my eyes are starting to go a little bit and I get all the information I need. So how does this work? If you press this button, you get your apps. And this is the tick watch sort of version of the two by two. You can change this to like scrolling along the side, but they're smaller. Again, larger is bigger for me and I can see two apps at a time. So those are your apps by pressing this button. By pressing this bottom button once, it takes me to my fitness app. I can go back to the home screen here by pressing the top button. If I double press this one, it turns on NFC, okay, or goes to the NFC so I can make a quick payment. If I long hold it, I get this cool thing for essential stuff restarting real quick, essential mode, which puts the uh, LCD screen on, drain the water, so you can get to that one real quick. Okay, there's some things in there. If I go from left to right, I get the Google Assistant. Okay, if I go top down, I get this quick menu with um, all my system stuff. Okay, again, watch another video if you're interested in that stuff. Bottom up, it's all my text notifications and Again, this is the home button when you need it. And then going to the right here, I get all my sort of like quick little apps. So I can, I can actually, these are tiles, I guess they're called. And they're just little tile apps that I can use for things that I might wanna see on a regular basis or get access to on a regular basis. I like the timer. <clears throat> I like this little voice recorder, um, you know, heart rate if I wanna see it, different apps that I can get to real quick. Uh, Weather is always nice. And then uh, this is, I think the schedule Sometimes it takes a little bit to update the information. Maybe nothing's going on today. I don't know. All right. So this video is getting a bit long. Again, if you want to know more about the actual watch and the apps and the specifications and all those things, that's not what this video is about. It's about my workflow, how I get the TickWatch Pro 3 GPS to work for me when it comes to fitness tracking. I know it was confusing and convoluted, but maybe, just maybe, I can reduce some of your figuring out time on your end if you watch this video and you don't have to go through so much troubleshooting that I went through. It literally took me a couple of weeks to figure out that workflow, believe it or not, to get this to work properly. All right, thanks for watching another GetFitOver40.com video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, take care.